Hello and uh, well, welcome and we are at Vision in Congleton and uh, I'm here to talk about your book, John Linley, Love and Crossbones, which is this book here. So um, it's a poetry collection. Yes, yes. And uh, how did it come about? Uh, it came about really through, um, it, um, it's my 10th collection, one or two of which were uh, self-published, but this one, particular one, came about as a result of a competition that I entered, a poetry collection competition, which I was shortlisted in. And um, the three, first, second and third, of which I was third prize, um, resulted in a publication. And uh, how long did it take to write, or how many years, or what um, time span are the poems in here? Some of the poems are, are reasonably recent. The book's taken a, a good while to come out, a few months to come out, but um, the poems you know, were, were right up to entering the competition, really. But, but um, because my previous two collections were both themed ones, one on cinema and one of poems about Dylan Thomas, it meant certain poems got stored up and ready for a new collection, so I, I had not exactly a wealth of material to choose from, but I had a, a good span and of a material. a big selection. So mm. did you have a theme in mind, or did you specifically want a, a compilation almost? It's just a compilation. It, it, it was good. I, I like working with uh, on themes when, when something uh, you know is arresting or, or captures the imagination. Um, but um, I also like um, the variety of a, of a collection, and that's a return to that. What made you think of which poems to include and what to exclude? If you, I presume you, you've got a mass of poems. Uh, mm. um, is it really difficult to pick which to put in and which not? Um, it gets easier in a way if you get subsequent collections because I tend to rule out, well, I do rule out anything that's already published. I don't mean published in magazines, but anything I've already published in books because I don't like crossovers, yeah. um, same poems in one book and, and then in another book. Um, so generally the starting point will be the last collection if it's a general collection and it's the years or months usually the years since that one um, hmm. but yeah this um, it's what poems I mean it's probably say, stating the obvious to say it's the best uh, in my regard the best of that those that selection of poems but it's not always fully that it's how poems will work even in an unthemed collection will work with each other yeah that's interesting do you think there's been a definite change in the way you've written over the years do you think these represent a change, a gradual evo evolution forwards in some direction. I think I think there is. Um, I think it's only marked when uh, you look back at previous collections, and I don't tend to spend my time reading, <laughs> reading through my books, um, uh, other than in in performance. Um, but uh, yeah, there there is a change. Um, but you know, even things I wrote when I was twenty, twenty one, or even teens. Uh, I write nothing like that now, but I can I can recognise that guy still. <laughs> hmm. And what sort of themes did you do you focus on now for when you're writing? Because I, I, I suppose it's a the world is just full of things you could potentially comment on, especially in these particular it, political it, times and all. Yeah, it, it is. I, um, I always find it very difficult when people say, what, what do you write poems about? Because I do write about lots of things. I'm not unique in that. A lot of poets do. But I'm not a landscape poet or a love poet. or you know. So I, I dip into things. I, the, the strange and the unusual appeal to me a lot. Um, hmm. uh, the quirkier things, I think. Um, but you know, not exclusively. I, f I find I write a little bit more on family than I ever used to. I never used to. Hmm. Maybe that's an age thing, so... <laughs> yeah, perhaps, perhaps. So perhaps you'd like to, to yeah. read a particular poem. Is, is okay. there one particular one that um, strikes you? Um, well, I'll read, um, I'll read a, a poem, not a terribly long poem, um, but it's, uh, it's called Elvis's Birthday. Um, and it's Elvis's birthday. Um, it might be known to some people watching this um, and not to others that Elvis was actually a twin his, his, his twin brother was um, stillborn so I'll read this Elvis's birthday like a thunder crack in a shotgun shack in a southern bed two peas in a pod popped a half hour apart one with a wooden heart the other newborn baby sweet and bound for lonely street the stillborn are stillborn, clothed in the skin they've worn for only nine months or so. They cry neither high nor low, but leave that to those wrapped in grief, the living's clothes of nightdress, pants, shoes, shirt, who dwell on earth 
not under earth. Pre-dawn, white trash room, wriggling from the vacant womb, the alive and kicking, bass note pulse, snare heart ticking, voice like a hound dog crying, all the time is lying in his mama's arms, his sibling cold, his mama warm. A course set that 8th January, Graceland, Priceville Cemetery. Of two below's two twin children, one's already left the building. Dawn breaks. Jesse Garren leaves the stage to Elvis Aaron. A lip curls, a leg twitches, an axis tips, the world pitches.